Hi, I'm Lisa Hill. I'm a Master's Prepared Certified Wound Ostomy Incontinence Nurse with over 30 years of experience. Currently, I'm Lead Consultant at Skinergistic Solutions. By nature, I'm curious and innovative. Founding Skinergistic Solutions allowed me to use my love for assessing and evaluating situations and my ability to drive solutions to help patients, providers, hospitals, and companies improve care and outcomes. Recently, I've had the opportunity to develop a wound and ostomy program for a level four behavioral health hospital create educational webinars, develop an educational video for the Department of Health for Pennsylvania, frame the care algorithm for a software module, address an organization's hospital-acquired pressure injury rates, and participate in a task force to assess wound care delivery to the homeless in our community. It's been a really exciting time for me. In my prior role as Regional Director of Wound Care, I was able to envision the direction and growth of a program within a large health system. It afforded me a platform to research and answer questions my team and I asked. And trust me, we asked a lot of questions. As a result, hospital-acquired pressure injury rates improved, supply costs reduced, and diabetic foot ulcer healing rates improved. Our multi-year improvement plan for diabetic foot ulcers inspired me to write Diabetic Foot Ulcers in Ambulatory Settings. Well, Lisa, it's very nice to meet you and thank you again for writing this article for American Nurse. Uh, can you briefly give an overview of why nurses should read this specific article? Sure, thanks, Andrew. Well, 6% of diabetics globally have foot ulcers and 19 to 34% will develop a diabetic foot ulcer in their lifetime. This means that regardless of what care setting we're practicing, most nurses are going to provide care for a patient with a diabetic foot ulcer. This article provides steps to minimize practice variance and reminds nurses that small groups and consistent messaging can make a big change. Well, obviously this topic seems very important and very close to, to something that you were interested in. What, what made you specifically want to write an article on this topic? As a director, every year I analyzed our wound trends and outcomes. One year I reviewed our data and I realized we had a big variance based on providers. I asked why. I developed tools to look at factors and our team entered data and reviewed articles. I found an article by Sheehan and colleagues about healing rates and was inspired to see if our team healing rates compared to his work's findings. Boy, did we have some work to do. We addressed clinical gaps and ultimately we were able to reduce time for healing for diabetic foot ulcers. Oftentimes, as nurses, Andrew, we forget we are all researchers. I wanted to share our findings and remind nurses that every day we ask ourselves why, and it's important to delve deeper and find the answer. I wrote this article not only to show my team's success and highlight the importance of early and optimal intervention, but to encourage nurses to ask why and offer an approach to help answer that question. That's fantastic. And obviously, as we've heard, there's a lot that goes into this specific uh, area that you've tried to tackle with this article. But if you could really narrow something uh, simple down for the nurses to take away from this article, what are two to three things that you would want them to really zero in on? Well, after reading the article, I hope nurses and readers will learn that we need to prioritize early intervention and consider advanced treatment modalities if there's been no improvement for a diabetic wound after four weeks. I hope that people will understand that the International Working Group on Diabetic Foot Guidelines suggested using um, infrared temperature for foot assessment 
and I hope clinicians begin to adapt that into practice. And probably most importantly, I hope that nurses realize that by partnering with providers, they have the role and capacity to ensure evidence-based practice is being followed. Awesome. Well, thank you again for writing this for American Nurse. We really appreciate it. And thank you for sitting down and talking with me about it today. Thank you for your time. And thanks for spotlighting our article. I really appreciate it, Andrew. Mm -hmm.